With climate change forcing the hand of the world's top innovators, what poses to be the most promising renewable energy source to supply the bulk of the U.S. energy grid? Wind power, nuclear, geothermal, hydroelectric, solar, all of these industries are entrenched in a deep battle to meet the future needs of the global energy market. While some countries like Costa Rica and Finland have managed to completely run off of renewables for a given amount of time, the US is a little more slow growing in the industry. With that said, renewables are posed to supply US power in the future, perhaps at the end of the current generation's lives. Geographically speaking, we are seeing growth in individual renewable fields like wind and hydroelectric power generation, but the solution to US-based renewables is still being sought. Even considering the conglomeration of renewables technology that exists across the United States infrastructure, we can speculate and predict where our energy sector is headed. In 2015, renewables accounted for 13.44% of the total domestic energy production, an impressive number considering those of just 10 years ago. Currently, hydroelectric power makes up the largest portion of the renewable energy grid, about 51% for that 2015 data. A close second to hydroelectric power is wind power, at 34%. The key thing to note here is that the leading two power generation sources are geographically constrained. Thus lies the first problem in the U.S. renewable energy pursuit. Geographically speaking, the U.S. is quite spread out and geographically diverse. Hydro and wind power can be great renewable energy producers for key geographic regions, but getting that energy to far off cities isn't yet economically feasible. This means that for locations without access to adequate wind or hydroelectric power, they're stuck to use coal or other renewables, which brings us to solar. For the most part, solar energy is available to the same extent across the globe, independent of geographic location. Solar currently makes up only about 5% of the total renewable energy market, which is close to nothing when you consider that it means that only 5% of 13.5% of the total US energy sector, 0.6% total, is made up of solar. The main problems holding solar back is the high energy cost and low efficiency. For single homes, solar roofs or roof tiles can make sense, especially like the Tesla solar roof, but only in examined on a super long-term basis. Relative to coal, solar is rather expensive in most of the US. However, solar is one of the few energy sources that can be used anywhere, which means that it may hold significant potential for the future of US power. Digging into solar energy even further, can it be scaled up to large-scale solar power plants? Well, yes and no. Globally, solar power plants are emerging and becoming fairly quite prevalent, with the largest being 648 megawatts. The problem with solar power plants is the amount of space needed to build them. This isn't a problem in countries or even in some US states where large open spaces are available rather close to big cities. The Topaz 550 megawatt solar farm in California is a good example of that. However, for most of the US, population is widely spread out, which means that centralizing solar plants is rather hard. What shows more promise in solar for the United States is the act of decentralizing the power grid. In other words, each house or community would produce power for themselves and feed excess energy back into the grid. You may think that this isn't really feasible, but it's already happening in Hawaii. Due to the isolation of Hawaii, energy costs are pretty high, roughly 35 cents per kilowatt hour. Along with impressive solar insulation in the area, it's created a market perfect for solar power. Residents have been installing solar panels like children buying candy, with one slight problem, a disgruntled candy man, the energy companies. The energy grid was designed to flow to houses, not the other way around. This has become such a problem that the power companies in Hawaii have had to regulate the installation of solar systems so they can manage upgrades to the system to enable two-way flow. Through the study of this effect in Hawaii, we can forecast the problems that the rest of the US market might have when widely implementing solar. 
Solar energy specifically shows a lot of promise to supply the US energy grid, regardless of location, which is what makes it one of the best alternatives to fossil fuels. But the transition won't be fast or cheap. To answer the overarching question we posed in this video, the short answer is all of them. The US energy grid is like no other across the world. Fully supplying the US's power with renewables will be sectioning off the grid areas and assigning them to specific renewable sources or just open sourcing the whole thing, whether that be wind, solar, hydroelectric, geothermal, biofuel, etc. With that management on the larger scale and small scale solar implementation, we may see renewables overtake fossil fuels in the next 30 years in the US energy grid.